Hey friends, welcome back to Go On Overland. Guys, in this one we got a special video for you. We're sitting down with a Vietnam vet and guys, he has quite the testimony. A new really good friend, Don Cisneros. So, hey, thanks so much for, you know, being willing to share your testimony and I can't wait to see what comes from it. But why don't you say we just get right into it? You know, uh, you know, God's really blessed my life. I've I turned my life over about three years ago to, I turned it over to God. How, uh, I don't know what came over me, uh, but anyhow, I, uh, I'm going to just start from the, the start. You know, I, uh, I went to Vietnam and I uh, was a dog gunner in a helicopter. Not only that, I, I was infantry for eight months. But anyhow, I, uh, I was flying over, we were trying to get some people out of there. And they uh, looked like World War II, the bullets coming up at us. And I saw the two helicopters in front of me get shot down. And I prayed and I prayed and I told God, well, you get me out of this one. And I'll turn my life over to you. And I, uh, I didn't do what I was, I didn't do what I was told. Yes, I got out of, I got out of Vietnam and I was hurting. I wasn't hurting what I saw over there, but I was hurting because I'm, I made a promise to God that, that I never fulfilled. I, uh, I didn't tell Chuck about this, you know, but even when I got back, I got back and I went to a church in, in Denver. And all of a sudden that church got quiet and there was a lady there started talking in tongues. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it got quiet again and then another guy interpreted and he says, you know, when you were over them hostile skies, you promised me that <laughs> you promised me that you would serve me. And still I turned my back on God. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Prophesying, yeah, that is intense that someone, that's how you know from the Holy Spirit, because if someone speaks on your behalf while walking in the Holy Spirit, that's heavy duty. So 50 years later, Diane started going, my wife started going to church. And uh, she kept telling me, you know, you need to go over there, you know, or whatever. And I told her, nah, I didn't. So anyhow, what I did, finally went to church and they had a potluck. I didn't know anybody there. And I was just by there by myself. I wasn't even back with the people. And I started looking for the pastor. Okay. And I finally found him. I walked up to him and I told him, you know, is there any way I can talk to you? And he says, you know, call me to, come, come and see me tomorrow. So I went down to the church and and I uh, prayed for me and talked to me and that night I got on my knees and I gave my I fulfilled that promise to God. Oh, wow. I gave my life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How good. How good. And the angels rejoice up in heaven every time we do that. But 50 years I hurt. And now I don't care. My life is nothing more. My life is not going to be nothing more to serve my God. There ain't nothing going to change. I'll never, every day I tell God, I will never, and I know I will never turn my back on you. Amen. How great is his faithfulness, you know, because I,
People don't understand, you know, that what kind of peace you can have. He's out there, you know. He loves us. There's so much out there for us. My life is right now, I don't want to die. But if I die right now, I'm not worried because my last breath is going to be my first. Amen. That's so good. But the reason I don't want to die is because i got a job to do for God now. Yeah. yeah. I waited 50 years, but now i got a job for Him. And if He wants to take me, He'll work me to death. And that's the way I'm going to look at it. Yeah, the peace that you understand matched with 50 years of walking away from the Lord is just, you know, it's hard to wrap your mind around. And that, and that hurts me and that hurts you and it comes through. And that's what I want for some of you folks and for some of you guys that have that friend or family or relative or neighbor who's not walking with the Lord. You know, I encourage you to share this video and that they might see that testimony and just understand that, you know, those 50 years, though he can't get back, that God's going to redeem that. God is redeeming it. If you could be here and feel the Holy Spirit in this, in our presence and just what God's doing here and what you guys have done for us, and we'll get into that later. But, friends, you know, we always think that tomorrow's not promised. However, what if tomorrow and then 50 years later was promised and you squandered it away, not serving the Lord, and seeing the joy and the abundance in the Lord that you've experienced uh, is just phenomenal. So that's why we tell some of these stories. Uh, but I was just so taken aback when you when getting to know you and understanding your testimony. And I, I just have no way of understanding what you've gone through. I have no way of being there, you know, in the in the helicopter next to you as you're watching these some of your friends and colleagues going down. And uh, of course, in the name of defending our freedom and serving yeah. us and I had, our gratitude is just beyond for you but I yeah I, I have no I way had of eight, eight months in Vietnam when I turned 19 years old I was a kid and I when I was sent over there I was infantry I beat the bush in them jungles for eight months no doubt lived out in the jungles you know and I got so fed up with that and I they needed door gunners and I I volunteered for that and I I I stopped riding home I My wife of 51 years now, uh, I said, told her, that's it, I'm done. I'm not, this is my resting place. Hmm. I, didn't, I didn't think I was ever coming home. Hmm. But she waited for me. Hey, Amen. She waited for me, and so did God. He knows where he found me. And I tell you what, you just got to... We, we fear nothing nowadays. I don't fear a thing. If God is for us, nothing can be against us. Yeah. Yeah, you've sure experienced some stuff. I haven't had to write my wife any letters like that or think those kind of thoughts. You know, you've, you've seen a lot, brother, and I'm just so continually encouraged uh, by how you want to spend out the rest of your days. You and I spend a lot of time no. talking about, of course, you're a deacon and serving the church in that way, but... Just all the ways that I see you serving the Lord now is just, yeah. it's time, attractive. Time, time for me to start carrying my own cross, you know. And that, that, that's the way we, uh, Diane and I, that's the way we feel, you know, is that every, everything is going to be for the Lord from now on. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, speaking of Diane, we were going to bring her in, friends. We're at, we got the honor and privilege to have both of these folks here, so we're going to have Diane come in a little bit and, and pad this story and just give a little bit of her testimony because it just encourages me and my wife, Jolene. So, uh, yeah, Diane, come on in and let's hear a bit more. Well, again, friends, thank you so much, Dan, for coming and just opening up your home to us and being willing to share you and your husband's testimony. And uh, we're going to get into again here in a minute what you guys have done to bless us. But at any rate, uh, you were telling us a lot of your testimony and holding on to a man all these years who hasn't been serving the Lord and you grew up Catholic and stuff like that. So yeah, please share a little yep. bit with us. I, I grew up Catholic, did all the stuff with Catholic and 
Um, I knew God, I always knew God, but um, I never had the relationship with Jesus. And um, so I'm gonna cry now. And I have that now. We, um, life's been rough. He had the PTSD and life has been rough. And we've, <laughs> Jesus saw us through the whole storm. And that's what people need to know is there are so many tribulations and trials in life. And the storm comes, but as long as you have Jesus with you and know that God is watching over you, you can do anything. Ah. And um, yeah, I got the Dear John letter. He oh, didn't, wasn't coming back. And I just said, nope. And I stuck with it and made him marry me when he got out. <laughs> <laughs> and we had four boys. And like I said, it's, it's tough. And you just do it together. And now God has blessed us so much. Um, it's just wonderful. We are at a point in our life where just, it's just wonderful. I need to say the one thing where you, about, you want it through you, husband. Oh, so when we first got married, I was going to church. I was going to church with his family. Uh, they had, um, I was going to the Pentecostal church and I told his sister, I was talking about my new husband. And she said, what, are you getting a divorce? Yeah. And I said, yeah. no. I said, I believe. Sister-in-law doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah. I said, no, I believe God will change him. I didn't know it would take that long. Yeah. But I knew, I knew God would change him. And uh, I said, I kind of drifted away during our marriage, uh, trying just to be more together. Uh, and then I just said, nope. I said, uh, that's not what I liked. I didn't like mm. living in the world. Um, I wanted to be closer to Jesus. And got rebaptized in the church, Amen. Don got baptized, and uh, the Lord's just working unbelievable wonders in our life. I'm so happy you told that because we have so many friends who are praying for a spouse right now. We have so many people who are holding on and wanting a little bit of hope, wanting a little bit of confidence that it's worth it. And just, you know, they have their own quiet time with the Lord and their spouses understand it and they, they lose hope and then they go back a friend encourages them for a little bit or maybe sees a video like this and they, you know, when it says to continually pray without ceasing, I think, you know, you've experienced that firsthand and what a great reward that, that you get to see. Sometimes we don't get to see that and just, right. you know, that's why we want to share this testimony with, with everybody. But obviously, friends, I uh, keep alluding to it, but these are the folks, if you check back a couple of videos back, uh, these guys... The Lord used them to buy us a new camper. So we live full time. If you guys have been watching the channel for a little bit, uh, and they came in to watch us preach at River of Life a couple weeks back, and we have our rig with us in the driveway, and they saw it, and the Lord got to use them in such a special way. So again, they don't want the glory or anything like that, but just it's so encouraging to think of, like we'll pick on Don a little bit, a guy who. You know, said he was going to serve the Lord and then didn't uh, for God to use, to end up being able to use you in such an amazing way. And, you know, we have a, a growing ministry. We have a, a bunch of channels and a, we've, we've traveled the states and done a lot of great things. We know that we got more coming in the future. So y'all are seeding into good soil here and we got some really great people that watch the, the show and, you know, like to pray along with us through all the journeys and stuff. But Man, we were just taken aback by that. So I didn't know if you want to talk a little bit about, you know, how the Lord led you to that. I'm sure they'd love to. We just, you know, we pulled up, like I said, we, we didn't know you. We've never met you. Um, we weren't sure if we were even going to go that night. We said, oh, let's just go see what it's all about. Fair enough. And we pull up and we look at the camper and I'm like, oh, no. I says, no. And I said, can we give him the fifth wheel? <laughs> And of course, he, it didn't work out, but and we went into church and, and when we got done with the service and watching you, Don's like, yeah, he said, we already we, knew our mind was yeah. made up. We looked at each other yeah. and we were like, no, we're going to find him another <laughs> camper. And that was it. God put it on our hearts and we said, we're going to do it. And, and we, when. We, and we want, we, you know, we want to give God all the glory, you know, because it's not, it wasn't. We were just being obedient. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can say that it's us, but it's not us. It's, you know, Amen. We're, we're just doing what God's called upon us to do, you know. It's just that uh, we put on this earth and nothing on this earth, but God blesses us so much so we can bless others. Amen. Yeah, he just put, he put you there, us there, 
the right time. Uh, his hand was in the whole thing. Yeah. And for him to find the camper right away, we said we but knew would, God would bring the right yeah, one to you. Us being as one, it would be just said as one, you know, no, yeah. no, we, God, God called on us to, that's what right. we need to do. And I felt like you and I were walking in one together and uh, Dan, you and my wife, Jolene, you know, we kind of all got together yeah. and talked about what it would look like and God just kind of put it there. But yeah. yeah, I wanted to give you all just an, another opportunity, maybe if you had something that the Lord's put on your heart to just speak some words of encouragement to these guys. No, I just, you know, life is tough. Um, there's always going to be the bumps in the road. Uh, but as long as you're serving the Lord and, let, and walking with Jesus, God is there for you. Jesus will take you through anything. There's no fear. I mean, it, he'll give you the peace you need. No matter what's going on in the world, you can have the peace knowing that Jesus is there. He will watch over you and protect you. He is just a wonderful, wonderful God. Amen. Amen. Sounds good. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh... Don't wait 50 years. <laughs> don't, don't wait 50 years because you, you've got a God that loves you. Don't wait 50 years. You know, if you need somebody, or make a phone call. You know, it's just, you know, God's waiting on you. And there's, you don't have to hurt. I mean, I, I ask God every day to soften my heart. Now look at this big old baby, you know, and it just... But, but that's what I, I want to know what I'm doing for my Lord. And every day is going to be not for me. I, 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 I try to talk to anybody I try to talk to before I didn't... I'm, I'm a child of God, but I'm a child of God, meaning that I'm so new to the Lord. Hmm. But I feel I'm pretty strong in the Lord now. Yeah, man. All, it, all, it, all it takes is just get in that Bible and spend time with God, and you'll draw closer than you ever thought you could draw. So good. Amen. Well, again, guys, we thank you so much for just loving on us and being obedient to the Lord. Guys, this is what we're doing over here at Go On Overland. We'd love for you to come along for the journey. The easiest way to do that is to subscribe. That way you'll get notified anytime a video just like this comes out. Uh, guys, make sure and leave a comment below. Let these guys know what their story meant to you. Until the next video, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you, lift up His countenance upon you, look upon you with favor, and give you that peace the peace that surpasses all understanding. Guys, we love you, and we'll catch you in the next one. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>